Hi folks, Irish Trekkie just stopping by to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our sponsors, Starfleet International. Starfleet International is the world's largest and oldest Star Trek fan association, providing a place where Star Trek fans can meet up, get to know each other, have fun and share in their love of Star Trek. I'm a member over here in Ireland in Region 20, so why not help out the channel, jump down to the description box and head over and let them know that Irish Trekkie sent you. And maybe we can meet up for one of their fantastic events. Hi folks, Damien here, aka Irish Trekkie, back with another Nerd Escape podcast. And as always, with me, we have... Oh, it's me, Chris the Trek Collector. How's everyone doing today? Well, hmm. I'm personally doing very good. And what about you, Chris? Not too bad, not too bad. Um, it's been quiet on the discovery front at the moment, which is kind of nice. That means I must be busy at work. But too quiet. always a good thing. But too quiet for mm. us. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. We have to find some scandal or gossip to talk about yeah. on this podcast. Interesting well, one you came up with this week. Yeah, indeed it did. The stuff was coming hot and fast there for a few weeks, so we were kind of almost back every second day. But the rumours, and I, I stress rumours because it hasn't been confirmed. No. But um, the talk on the street is that uh, there's been a pretty big change in the production of uh, Star Trek Discovery. And mainly in the VFX production, so the visual FX, okay? Um, and as far as I was aware, Chris, they were being dealt with in-house. Yes. Um, with the, in, within the production. But uh, potentially now we have a new player on the field that that particular VFX department was let go, unfortunately. And the rumor is that Pixamundo has come on board. So what, what are your initial thoughts on that bit worried because i know previous movies okay pixamundo has been used for into darkness uh industrial lights magic has been used quite a lot by star trek over the years uh, i think it started off with star trek 2 the rat can mm. so there's a good working relationship with ilm plus as well it made quite a lot of models for the star trek show so there's a good kind of working relationship there now i know everything's moved to studio well it's all cgi now they don't need to make models mm. but for me for the tv series they always kind of had their in-house team yeah and i would take it that the likes of the arts department and the visual like the visual effects team would be working fairly fairly close now how they think that this can make production quicker um, doesn't make any sense to me. I I think it worked well with the TV series. You know what I mean? I think these guys were fairly, fairly talented. I think there was a good working relationship. They knew the demand of how to handle um, episodes. Now, it's I don't know where this rumor is saying that the production team for the uh, visual effects couldn't keep up to date. But to me, there's been so many chops and changes with Discovery. How could anybody yeah keep up to you know what i mean so i i'm a little bit worried on this one um okay there's nothing wrong with the rumor of who's coming in they mm. do have a record they have done star trek before they have been working on game of thrones they've an interesting way of doing things um you know uh like as i said like uh look the, you know they they used uh dummies and matt dressed them up in armor for that big wall of dead when Jon Snow was taking on uh, Lord Bolton or Game Roose Thrones, Bolton yeah. was it yeah Game of Thrones which is fantastic um, they had Jon Snow standing in front of an actual galloping yeah. of horses you know what I mean that wasn't CGI done so they're talented in other ways but is this going to be quicker I don't know um, I don't really kind of work in an art department that would be close to probably mm. dealing with somebody across the way from me or maybe in another office but probably in the same building con uh, complex, which you get close and personalized. So is this going to really work too well? I, It's it's hard because, you know what I mean? you got to think mm. this guy's going to be in the, the creative department design and stuff. And all now all of a sudden they're going to have to go out step by step and probably have 50 million questions to ask. Whereas these guys would have been, they would have known the like say of, oh, look, anyone that's working in the art department, they probably would have had a history of working with these. Because again, I'd say, a lot of the guys that are on Star Trek Discovery, if they're on the CBS payroll, have probably done this stuff before. Yeah. So there would have been great communications. I don't know. I'm a bit worried. That's that's. Yeah. yeah no, I, I think they're I think they're valid points. Like, and it is a shame 
that when you have something in house, you do have that little bit of extra special relationship there. And mm. like we, me and you, and plenty of others who watch podcasts like this, have seen a lot of the behind the scenes of Star Trek yeah. from the original series right through to the kind of golden era of the eighties and nineties of TNG right through to Enterprise, um, in the early two thousands. And the same, not to say that they kind of stuck to form but like the same names were associated in visual effects in art department yeah. as well as costume and makeup as well and yeah they kind of moved yeah i, I agree with you there what you're saying they moved from like tng some mm. moved off to deep space nine when that was filming yeah. if they weren't on deep space nine they were involved in voyager and you'd actually see it in the the, the, the credits which exactly and and that's and that's point. and that's fantastic credit to the people involved in this and you can see the benefit of having, as you said, someone potentially in the same office or same region as you yep. that you can, you know, in a, in a production meeting. Right, guys, let's make that pink or let's make that duck egg blue or whatever. And, you know, OK, perfect. Let's go over here and let's mash it out now. OK, in modern day age, is it essential? No. Like, you know, let's look at beyond all the VFX work was done in the UK. Uh, yep. versus the practical side was done in Canada as well so it's not essential but I do feel you know if it is true I do feel kind of sorry for the VFX guys who were let go and the rumor has it as you mentioned that the potential kind of instigation of this was that they couldn't meet the demand of the ever-changing schedule like we saw the first graphics rollout at San Diego comic-con wasn't the that greatest was but it was rushed it was they said it was rushed you and can't you can't i don't I, th I think it's very harsh to blame anybody that yeah. had to do that i'm sure what you call it whoever did that wasn't even happy with it no you know what i mean that's, guarantee that's fact. that that was pushed 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 that was the demand of a network company you know pushing this an unrealistic you know what demand. i mean now and i'm not being funny this is the same network that promised like star trek discovery is nearly a year late let's be honest when it is never been told late uh late late summer, summer early early so we're looking at august september and realistically let's be real about it it's going to be september that's yeah. normally when these shows tend to air look at it as well game of thrones will be finished up by then um walking dead won't be on air mm. you know what i mean it's prime time for a science fiction you yeah. know the 100 is going to be over the expanse is going to be at, at an end at that point so it's prime time for which TV, i think is good sci-fi for Star oh, Trek it's good. to find it's good its for own. Star Trek. It's not battling out against, well, like, okay, the 100 and the Expanse might not be big network block blockbusters, but Game yeah. of Thrones certainly is. The Walking Dead certainly is. So you look at it from that point, you know what I mean? Is it a coincidence now that's fallen into September? No, not, not to me. I think when it just started getting pushed out and pushed out, they were never going to run the show in the summer. It makes no sense. People are on holidays, hmm. you know what I mean? You got to realize as well, they want people to sign up for CBS All Access. Are you going to pay $5.99, I believe? And I think that's the package with the adverts. Are you going to pay that in the summertime when you're away in Hollis? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like Good most point. people will switch off from their sports packages, you know, when the, the Premiership Soccer is over. Let's disconnect, uh, you know, at the start of the summer. There's no football to watch. There's barely any sports. Mm. You know, kill the package and then, you know, look for a new package in September. Mm. So, you know, to me, I always had that feeling it was always going to be around September. Um, how can you blame a visual effects department team on not meeting these deadlines? I, you know, just been just too much chop and change mm. since Fuller left. You know what I mean? I think the apple cart has been rocked, and a lot of Big apples time. have fallen out of that cart. Yeah. So you know, everything's all over, all over the shop. Um, is it just the powers that be just decided this department is costing too much money? Mm -hmm. Let's cut it loose. You know, I can understand that, like, but, like, in fairness, the history of, like, we've talked to guys associated with Star Trek before, myself and yourself, we've done interviews with, with guys, and they've done these kind of projects, and I don't want to bring in anyone's names, I don't want to bring in anything, because I just don't want anyone being associated with one of my theories, but mm. these guys have done so much work out of their own time um, oh, yeah. for a love of show. Um, Late nights, was, weekends to, you yeah. know, get stuff done, because it's a passion and, project. Do they get paid for it? I don't know. Um, but it is. It's the passion project and the side of things. But is this just a way to just cheap now the payroll that we don't have to worry about this? A visual effects company come in and say, we will charge you X amount per episode and that's it. Yeah. And everything's over to them. 
So, like, will they make money from it? Who knows? I don't know. I think to me, it just sounds pure cost cutting. Um, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of companies are doing it this, these days. You know what I mean? They're just getting rid of stuff. You know, They're just an extra drain on payroll. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's it's a funny one to me, but I just don't buy that excuse that they weren't meeting the deadline. I like, how can you tell me? There's been that much change. Like, you know what I mean? Actors were only announced a while ago. You know what I mean? How can the visual yeah. effects just get all this stuff together? Yeah, you know. And like speaking speaking of money, because again, at the end of the day, and we're not privy, and we never are, be it in the original series TNG, there's a lot of behind closed doors corporate influence here oh, as well. I know we, we all think of Star Trek as this wondrous passion project, you know, fantastic franchise, but at the end of the day, it's Paramount's, it's CBS's, it's a franchise that. Yeah. Okay, maybe there's a lot of people involved in the corporate side that love Star Trek too, but it's money talks. And I, you know, like uh, what were we what were we talking about there? We were trying to kind of work out approximately kind of how much the, is kind of being bankrolled into Star Trek Discovery as well. And there was actually a good bit of talk on the Discovery forums recently as well that I think the kind of the going figure that people are kind of swinging around is about six or seven million per episode with the pilot probably having a higher run to be the wow factor to get people as you said oh on cbs all access you know look at the the next generation the first episode like um encounter fire firepoint just you know what i mean the whole saucer separation Mm. and was reused stock footage over and over again because it costs so much money yeah so yeah you'd expect that on the pilot that the, the pilot would be dearer Look, I uh, I just think it's it's very hard. And like again, as you talk about executives and all this, like one of them did quote that like Star Trek is the family crown jewels. Like, that's when me. they say crown jewels, are they talking? This it's, is where we money. make the money out of. This is money. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, in fairness, let's be realistic. Where Star Trek has made more so than Paramount over the last while, where where merchandise got separated, and um, CBS has been laughing. Yeah. For like since the, the late sixties up up until now, especially like Star Trek was a cash cow last last year with all the bits and pieces coming out. Mm. The license of the Eagle Moss, the Starship collections, you know, there's always been kind of some like magazine that Ben worked on the the fact files going back years ago. Yeah. But even in between that, <laughs> the freaking DVDs. I believe the DVDs are Paramount's uh, going back when it was just when it was all one happy kind of family yeah. back then. The DVD sales was all Paramount, but like merchandise. Like you think about like between phasers and oh, everything, you know what I mean? They've always been reeling in money. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And you haven't really seen CBS really doing too much mm. about, and like they haven't been particular either about licensing sometimes, you know? We've been blessed that Eagle Moss and we have Ben Robinson doing that collection because he's passionate mm. and he cares about Star Trek. He cares about sci-fi. And if any got, like, anybody out there has met Ben Robinson, this guy is amazing. He loves Star Trek. He loves the sci-fi. Um, he's a great guy. You can easily t- chat to this fella, mm. um, and he's passionate. He knows the mistakes on his models that are made. And again, like it, like as we said, everyone has to answer to somebody upstairs. He's under pressure. You know what I mean? Companies can't like. I'm sure he'd love to spend another two months, but he has to get models out every two weeks. And mm. um, specials have to be out. You know, and I'm sure he'd love to hold a production of something, but he can't. You to know, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because the, the, his bosses want money. And to me, you know, we've seen it over the years with even Star Trek merchandise. Some of it has been absolutely crap. Sorry to say. <laughs> oh, I know there's some gems out there. Yeah. I know going back, we got an explanation on why some of the Playmates stuff was off because Playmates were given the license to do these things, but they were given the initial concept artwork. That's why some of the Playmates stuff doesn't look right. Yeah. But that's how much CBS cared about the license back then. Yeah. You know, li- literally. Oh, let's think of selling merchandise. So there's a drawing of a ship. Go make it. And then when it's <laughs> finalized in the film, it's it's different, you know? And that doesn't so, show much to the fans. I'm like, come here. We see how fussy you are with little starship models, by the way. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's, it's a little bit of an insult, you know what I mean? It wasn't fair. Like, I know Playmates, I didn't realize that until I spoke. So I'm not going to name names because I don't want to bring people into my little theories. Mm. But it was interesting when that point was brought up, and I never knew that. Because some, some some of the Playmates stuff can be absolutely amazing, yeah. And some it's just it, it just Absolute doesn't look right. Now now you you know you know 
we now know why, you know. So if that's the way CBS thinks of things, you know, and mm. that this is where I worry about. I think a lot of the guys that would have been in house, they love Star Trek. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know, we've we've been blessed to speak to a couple of guys that have worked on Star Trek and there's a love, there's a passion for it. Mm. So selling it out to another company, do we know, do, do any of these guys, and this is one thing the fans have brought up on most things is, and all I want to see is a love and care for Star Trek. Is anybody in the visual effects side of things on this new company know Star Trek? See, that's it. Like, let's take it. Let's let's switch over a gear and let's talk if this rumor is solid. Okay. And Pixamondo is the new VFX house. Like when you look at their pro- profile or, or portfolio, should I say, um, the direct link between Star Trek Discovery and Pixamondo is that they worked on Into Darkness. Okay, and I'm pulling up some images there for people at home to kind of see. Um, and that stuff, okay, listen, we're talking about Abrams' Star Trek. Not much loved by a lot of fans, but if we look at the kind of mastery of what they did in there and let's not talk about canon and stuff like that these guys don't set the rules they're given the art they need yeah. to make it come alive and yeah. um like when you look at some of the scenes that they did and i'm just gonna i'm gonna be playing like the, yeah, the mud like, ship and yeah harry mud's ship flying through on chronos is fairly cool I, like i'm not a fan of the the klingon bird of prey in yeah. that movie one bit whatsoever but again as you said not their fault but again the effects with them on the klingons sliding down a rope which was fairly cool. I don't know mm. why the Klingons just didn't use their transporters, but hey, maybe Klingons. <laughs> it's more exciting. Maybe JJ, <laughs> maybe JJ just thought Klingons shouldn't have transporters at this point. Again, Make it look around. cool. <laughs> anyway, but you know what I mean. There was some pretty things. The Enterprise underneath the ocean and and coming up was yeah. pretty damn the good. The attack at the uh, Daystrom Institute by uh, yes. Khan and stuff like that. And like yeah. that's one one of the nice things I like about just even that scene as well is that. Uh, I think Pixamondo are very good at integrating CGI into practical sets and they live are. action as well. So it's not just like in your face CGI. It's an enhancement of a practical actor's work and partial set and stuff like that as well. Now, they have a pretty good portfolio across they, the board. They, they do. Like they've, they've worked with Game of Thrones and like... So they have worked with TV shows, and I think they that was one of the concerns. Shows. They, they can work with TV shows. So if they, they do Game of Thrones, and like that is filmed over, like that, that's filmed over five continents, isn't it? I believe, or is it five five countries? Anyway, I know some of it's filmed and here in Ireland. Here, yeah. yes. Uh, so you know, like it's amazing that they they can do it. Um, again, Game of Thrones will be under a very tight deadline. Um, they could, they've, mm. they've handled it now I remember just reading back one point that just kind of looking into this podcast before we got into it that with ILM yeah. uh, they, you know what I mean they signed on for Star Trek 2 and they were there up to Star Trek 4 and William Shatner kicked them out for Star Trek 5 believe it or not because he felt as though they weren't getting their A team and they weren't getting their B team because they had other projects going on and it was kind of like the C team mm. and it wasn't good enough and that's why Shatner now I, okay I like his Captain Kirk, but it thought, you know, it was. Now, in fairness, I don't know, did he... Look, Star Trek Five is one of those movies that you just don't really want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> only even but, number Star Treks. <laughs> only even number Star Trek, but like... Did, did the visual effects company go in and do a poor job? Like, well, there wasn't really much to go on, you know what I mean? Uh, well, the, the, yeah, it's still hard to say. The turbo lift numbers now were a big... I well yeah like you're, you're right like you know just because there's a name associated with a project doesn't guarantee you excellent work i i think an, anyone could name 10 movies that they've seen where the vfx has been brutal but equally we have gems out there that we can go that was amazing look, look you know? at the end of the, at the end of the day is you get what you pay for um that's it pick some mondo it depends on how much they're getting paid to do this and what you know, resources that's, that's, and time they have as well to do it because they're based in yeah. Germany and I think uh, I think they have an office in I Beijing I think there's a few studios around well. around actually I think they've one in San Francisco if I was reading right I think the five or six different site uh, yeah. places so they, they did do a restructure I mean? there a couple of years ago kind of pulled it back but I think they're starting to build up again but we do have a VFX house that is really rooted in feature films 
And I know people were concerned that if this is true, how can they meet the demands of a TV schedule? But as you said, Game of Thrones, we have Fringe, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Walking yeah. Dead, a huge the amount of TV Not shows. The Walking Dead. Yeah. The Walking Dead. <laughs> no, I think they, 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 they did There's both. They, did, they, they actually have both I here, I can see in their list. Walking... Oh, is it is. They, I couldn't find them. I've seen them now for fear at The Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Again, though, with some, some TV shows, it depends on how much visual effects. Like, The Walking Dead really doesn't need too much, mm. to be honest with you. Um. You know the odd explosion here and there might come into it, but realistically, there there isn't. You know, yeah. initially, it's not like a sci-fi production. I think if they're going to do the change, make it easier on the crew. You know, go with someone that has a work you have a working relationship with. That goes along the way. LM, you know what I mean? Industrial light magic, or just keep the in-house department there. I, like, I don't know. Look, the other side of it could be as well that like what you call it, the expense of computer equipment and staying up to date with the modern. Could that be part of the reason why CBS decided to, you know what I mean? How much would it cost to keep, you know, a visual effects department well, going? Yeah. You know what I mean? With I'm sure it's a huge amount of money so there. Much. Yeah, like we're looking well, at 4K. It's, it's like, for, forget your staff. Like, it's it's it's, it's equipment. You know what I mean? And sure, like, you, you buy the latest piece of equipment and within six months it needs to be replaced. And if Moore's you're law, going yeah. for the high quality caliber that you're going to, you want Star Trek to be really hitting up around the Game of Thrones, Mark, which is, seems to be the indication from CBS and Netflix that we're getting. Hmm. It's like, no, we're, we want to, you know, we want to make this a big, massive production. You know, that's some serious special effects you have to get right. So, you yeah. know, obviously it's going to have to be top of the line equipment. Maybe that could be one of the reasons it's nothing to do against the guys that were rumored to be let go. It could be the simple fact that, you know, why should we be equipping these guys out all the time when we can just let another company worry about that? Outsource it, yeah. So, you know, so. Pay for the product, not for the logistics yeah, and the. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sad to see anyone um, lose, lose work. their jobs. Yeah. I know it's hard in the likes of, the, say, the film industry. You know what I mean? There's always somebody out there. You know, that can be a better actor, or a better musician, a uh, better producer, better, you know what I mean? It's such hard competition. And again, we know from doing previous podcasts with guys that have worked background in Star Trek and how hard it was for them to get their foot in the door. Mm. So we do know it's really, really hard. And, you know, anyone that loses that job is really, really sad. But I fear that we could have probably lost some big Star Trek fans that would have some talented Star Trek fans and so close I like so far into would production would be happy enough to do 60 hours and get lost in their work that's what I'm more worried about but they probably would have got lost in their work yeah. um, trying to complete um, an episode whereas now you're going to a company that will be probably unless they like Star Trek will be by the clock mm. clock in clock out and that's the problem with outsourcing now again flipping the coin maybe they are diehards we don't know you know um, oh, okay. but I do right. I do get people's fear that like if we if we were to go with the information from last year we should all be sitting down watching star trek discovery right now and it was pushed to may push to september ish time but like yeah we would have been just over mid season break we we should be nearly coming to the end if they're going 13 13 episodes we should be pretty much coming to a close doing the rewatches again (laughs) yeah you know but like you know i do get it i do get people's worry i do get people's fear and uh, it's never good to see talented people uh, potentially lose their jobs. But, you know, at the same time, I don't I don't see it as a nail in the coffin for Discovery as well. Because it, if it is true, it's crappy. But I think Pixamondo are uh, a substantial enough V of X house that I think can pull it off. And it'll be great to see what they can do with Star Trek TV if they can mm. have that level that they did in Into Darkness, quality-wise, see that coming through. Now, listen, I don't want to yeah. open a debate on the stylistics of Discovery now in the comment section. Oh, you know, the shape of the badge and the uniform. That's not what this is about. This is about quality and production now. And I think they're, I think they're, I think they're up for the task. Yeah, but... well, look, at the end of the day, is visual effects is starships, battles, and you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, we love Star Trek. Star Trek's more than about the ship. Mm. It's more than about just ships in space and blowing things up. But I hate to say it, and I don't care what anyone else says and shoot me for that. I love that 
Um, that to me is part of Star Trek. You know what I mean? Yes, the storylines are great, and yes, storylines are big important. Thing, but I like me a space battle. Um, I oh, like yeah. my special effects. I love seeing my ships. So like torn to, me, to bits. I want to see bits falling off ships, not just yeah, like, like other oh, shields are that, down. <laughs> one thing that's always kind of lacked in Star Trek, and I can understand going back over the years, was what you call it cost. You mm. know, to me, if you're going to outsource, you're going to like give us a quality battle that you know what I mean. We get like more than ten seconds or a quick little sneaky peek at a ship, and then yeah. we're going back and trying to still frame and kind of make out this model you know what i mean until mm. ben robinson drops us a bombshell and go here you go and we actually finally see the bloody ship yeah, up close, yeah personal, up close you know? in, in resolution <laughs> <laughs> but like it'd be nice to kind of see you know what i mean and that is an that that is an important part of star trek like you know what i mean i'm sure it, all this, the next generation episodes that the enterprise got destroyed in they were like top of everybody's star trek list to watch two or three times yeah. just to see the enterprise d explode yeah um don't you know that's just the nature of things like once it came back together and everything was all right it was brilliant but like cause and effect was a great one yeah Um, i'm sure i could think of three or four more like all good things when you've seen three of them blow up like except that bloody big white shine that we couldn't really make out the explosion too well but like Boo-hoo. you know let, let's talk about voyager you know the year of yes. hell you know you're seeing fantastic. voyager just oh, voyager battered battered you know, An absolutely fantastic year of hell, absolutely fantastic and great way. What's your color? What, what, what an explosion of a starship, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But like longer stuff like that would be absolutely amazing, yeah, as well as a good kind of uh, yeah, you need the storyline, but that, like you assume that's going to come with Star Trek, yeah. And what I'm, uh, and what I'm hoping for, and I think it's a guarantee, and we saw it in Enterprise as well, it's just not the same stock footage used over, over and over like, again. I, I like the, my the Excelsior star. class. But like if I see the hood one more time, you know, flying beside the Enterprise or stuff like that, you know, it's like, OK, I get it. But I, money. Believe, <laughs> yeah, I believe I read somewhere on Battlestar Galactica, they were not allowed to use any stock footage. They had to do Damn. everything. I want that rule. For, I want that rule for Disco. Yes, please. You know what I mean? So like if anyone's every time watching seen... from the production team, put yeah. that up on the whiteboard. Please like, do not Discovery, reuse stock if, footage. If, 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 if Discovery Saucer section can separate, great. Yeah, we uh-huh. don't want to see the same sequence. We don't want to see the same shot over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Which I can't remember one of the episodes where the Enterprise D saucer separation completely was mismatched with the episode because they took it from the pilot episode. It just made no sense. You know what I mean? There, I think it was yeah. the one where Geordi was down on the planet. And you bring back half the ship, but wherever that way that sequence went, it just was wrong because it was done out in space and the Enterprise was around the planet and he was saucer separate. It just looked wrong. That's just yeah. one example. But... <laughs> Stop using stock footage. Yeah. But like yeah. Battlestar Galactica, I heard they had to do. So every time a Viper came out, now they, they obviously filmed it differently. So, like, you know, and it did. It, it, it made good viewing. You know, it's, yeah. it's nice. It kept you know, science fiction. Science fiction is about the starships. It is about the visual effects as well. Yeah. You know, we need a good story. We need Star Trek to be true to its origins. I'm not giving out, but I like me some exploding ships. And as you said, bits and pieces of starship floating around in space. You know what I mean? It's and a necessity. It'll be nice to see. On a similar note, actually, one thing I'm looking forward to at Discovery, that if Pixamondo is involved in it, is uh, the sets, the never-ending hallways. They're not just like painted perspective art that you know we actually have like characters walking like 50 yards down the back of someone and stuff like that i'm looking forward to a real internals of ships you know uh, i can't i can't oh, wait for stuff inter- like that. internals would be nice um <laughs> i don't know whether you're gonna get a long long car be some big sound stage that they're using but like judge by the size a fake, of a fake long seen. corridor yeah v- vfx yeah, yeah vfx yeah it could be done but like mind you but the, the pictures that we've seen the soundstage seems massive which we still can't really we were guessing it could be Klingon the inside of a Klingon compared with the sarcophagus when we're looking at the photographs of the sarcophagus mm, that be. looks huge uh, and that looks like your long corridor that looks like <laughs> my long corridor maybe I get it maybe I get it <laughs> It's not that painted wall at the end <laughs> exactly exactly or a but, mirror you see they put mirrors in at one point in the next generation at the end of one of the cars yeah and they had the little plant and that was uh, fine when we all had like four by three 
probably not big televisions but here we are now in in 42 inch 50 inch and more as well but you know yeah. we can hope i'm like we're going can't to see remember in what September. episode that i was like what the feck is there a mirror doing at the end of a corner <laughs> seriously lads <laughs> you can see the cameraman just waving <laughs> i suppose it's a nice touch i can't remember it was just kind of a glance i think they had a potted plant on it which was very nice just to shake too much i'm sure it was mad 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 mag locked onto the deck anyway oh it has to be has to be you know oh, safety be, first yeah. safety first right yeah but anyway folks um we could probably sit here again for another 30 minutes talking about our best and, and favorite and worst vfx moments but let us know down below what you think of this possible change in vf uh, vfx houses in star trek discovery and what do you think it means to the production and, and um maybe let us know what your favorite and worst vfx moments in star trek are as well absolutely i think that would make a great podcast yeah give us your favorite star trek any star trek jj the whole anything animation anything put it down in the comment section below what was your favorite visual effect from star trek i think that's a great mm. topic maybe we could talk about that and put up some images from the the interwebs for another podcast yes yes so yeah that's pretty much it um maybe by the time we meet up again we'll have some more information maybe some more cast leaks or uh not leaks but releases from cbs because releases are nicer <laughs> leaks leaks are fun but i prefer the information to come out Direct the proper the way to not kind of step yeah. on anyone's toes and stuff like that um but yeah listen i think that's pretty much it um mr truck collector so i think we'll uh, wrap it up there but don't forget we are all we always continue the conversation over at the unofficial star trek discovery facebook group page links are in the description below and uh, don't forget to go check out this handsome guy's youtube channel and twitter as well if you want to stay up to date with everything merchandise for star trek and if you like star trek starships check out my little channel which you're currently watching here as well but uh yeah listen Thanks for watching. It's goodbye from me. Slan from me. And we see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.